Hello and welcome to Football Scope, the place where I'll be discussing all things football related. Before we get started, if you haven't already then do make sure you click subscribe to ensure you don't miss any videos in future. Now let's get straight into it. Today's topic is going to be around David De Gea and the 5 reasons why he will still be Man United's number 1 come next season. The goalkeeper position is quite possibly the most punishing position on the football field. You can make 10 world class saves to keep your team in the game, but as soon as you make an error, the opposition score, well, that's your fault and all the good things you've done up to that point are forgotten. David De Gea has been Man United's goalkeeper for the last 9 years. When he initially arrived from Atletico Madrid, he was generally targeted by the opposition team players, especially on set pieces, but Man United stuck with him due to his world class potential which was evident from his early playing career due to his cat-like reflexes. So here are the 5 reasons why I think he's still going to be our number 1 come next season. Number 5. Making freak mistakes rather than errors which can't be fixed. De Gea has been in the news this season for all the wrong reasons. His recent mistake against Chelsea in the FA Cup has once again shone a bright spotlight on him and his future at the club. He has made several key errors but I'd class them as freak errors rather than errors which can't be fixed. If we look at 3 of the most high profile ones this season, his error against Everton, well, he dallied on the ball too long and Calvert-Lewin just blocked the shot and it went in, 100% freak goal. His error against Watford where Saar's shot spinned in somehow, again, 100% freak goal. And the most recent against Chelsea where Mount's tame shot somehow was fumbled into the net, again, 100% freak goal. 99 times out of 100, these so-called shots are saved. Anyway, there have also been instances where we've conceded soft goals, I admit, but again, De Gea hasn't always been helped by some weak defending either. For example, the first and the third goal against Chelsea can also be partly blamed on Lindelof and Maguire's inability to react before the opposition players and getting across to implement the block. The goal against Southampton, again, Maguire is marking Wan Bissaka, our own player, he misses the header, and then Lindelof gets outmuscled and outmaneuvered by Obafemi for a simple tap in. If that goal doesn't happen and we win that game, our winning streak continues and we probably won't be having this debate about De Gea right now. Number 4. De Gea's contract. Even if Man United wanted to get rid of De Gea, his extremely high new contract means only a very few select clubs can afford him. Potentially what, Paris Saint Germain? As the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona have world class keepers of their own. David De Gea signed a new 4 year contract last season reportedly worth around £350,000 a week and at that time most of my United fans would have probably been delighted as De Gea was still in the conversation of being one of the best goalkeepers in the world. So due to this contract, even if De Gea was replaced by someone else in goal, you're still going to be stuck with a financial burden on the bench. For this reason, I still believe the club will be patient with him before making any rash decisions on replacing him. Number 3. His age. De Gea is still only 29 years old. Goalkeepers usually maintain their abilities until their early to mid 30s. Edwin van der Sar, the legendary goalkeeper, was 34 years old when he was signed from Fulham, helping Man United to four Premier League titles as well as claiming a Golden Glove award for 21 clean sheets in the season. Gianluigi Buffon was a regular at Juventus and Paris Saint Germain up until his late 30s, and only in the last few years has he become a substitute. So at 29 years old, De Gea still in theory has plenty of good years left in the tank should he overcome the scrutiny of these recent high profile errors. It is also worth remembering Man United actually have the third best goals conceded record in the league so far this season so I feel his recent mistakes have brought out a lot of knee jerk reactions from a lot of people. Number 2. Loyalty it's worth remembering, in our atrocious 7 years since we last won the league, one of the few players who actually performed to a high consistent level was David De Gea. Since 2013, he won the Man United Player of the Year award a record 4 times. Yes, 4 times. For comparison, Cristiano Ronaldo won it 3 times, Rooney just twice, Beckham and Giggs just won each. Yes, our title winning squads had much better quality so to win it regularly would have been more difficult but from a group of 25 players every year for the past 7 years to be nominated 4 times is still quite a remarkable achievement. De Gea is probably one of the few players who could have left Man United and gone on to better things in the past few years. He was heavily linked with Real Madrid on various occasions and due to a certain faulty fax machine, it's meant for one reason or another he had to stay put. But instead of sulking and mouthing off to the press, he has never said a bad word about the club and has always been the ultimate professional. This loyalty needs to work both ways and as a result I can see us sticking by him in the next year too. 
And the number one reason is his replacement. The number one reason why I think David De Gea will still be our number one is who is going to replace him. If we look at the goalkeepers at the club currently, Sergio Romero, as well as he does, has always been a number two goalkeeper. He has a very good clean sheet to match his ratio, but he generally plays against weaker opposition in the Europa League or in FA Cup games. Additionally, when was the last time you heard of a top European club who was linked with Romero to make him their number one choice goalkeeper? Exactly, so I can't see us suddenly turning to him on a permanent basis. The other more interesting suggestion is Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson has had a breakout season this year with Sheffield United. The Man United loanee has been in fine form as Sheffield United defied the relegation favour odds to being in the top half of the league. A big part of their success this season has been Henderson's form which has seen him keep 13 clean sheets, helping the team to concede the fourth lowest amount of goals in the league. The issue I have is, it's one thing being a goalkeeper at Sheffield United and a completely different matter being a goalkeeper at Manchester United. The attention, the intrusion, every single thing you do is scrutinised at Man United. I remember when we signed Ben Foster, he was deemed to be our goalkeeper for the future but despite his qualities, he never quite adapted to the mental state of being Man United's first choice goalkeeper and was eventually sold. I fear the same might happen with Dean Henderson. He is only 23 years old and this is his first proper season in the Premier League. It will do him the world of good to have another season under his belt to develop further. If he maintains his upward trajectory, which he has done this season, and De Gea continues to decline and make mistakes and prove to be inconsistent, then there will be a much stronger case for Dean Henderson to be number one. But for now, for next season at least, I believe De Gea will still be the best choice for us. So these were my thoughts on the whole De Gea conversation and why I think he will still be our number one. The question is, who do you think should be number one? Or perhaps we should be signing a new goalkeeper? If so, who would you sign? Let me know your thoughts by commenting below. If you liked and enjoyed watching this video, please do subscribe for more in the future. Thanks again for watching Football Scope and I hope to see you on my channel again soon.